From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. The first headline that I am going to give you is absolutely astounding. Actually, it's a question mark at the end of it. USA Today says, closing time? Question mark. And then Iran, we're ready for decisive battle with Israel and the US. Hmm. That's Iran. They said that we weren't going to do that. They weren't going to do that. Can you imagine going on? Obama and Pope Francis discuss global conflicts and human rights. We are going to focus on some of those things very definitely in this program, friends. And the first one I would like to do is referring to the Pope's trip to the Middle East. Now, the cartoonist sort of entered in on this and explained some of the confusion out there. There is confusion. How do I properly address the Pope? Your Holiness. How do I properly address the world's preeminent leader, President Putin? Well, there seems to be a lot of confusion going on because from day to day, there seems to be uh, who is the world's preeminent leader, and it changes. Have you noticed that one? Jerusalem, a cup of trembling, jihad in Jerusalem. Now, the Palestinian Authority claims that jihad fighters should not flock to Syria but to Jerusalem, and also the Palestinian chairman, Moham Abbas, applauded when he said that. I'm going to ask Jack this, a very, very serious, serious question. Does the Pope feel that Jerusalem belongs to the Palestinians? That's a big question to me. Being there 10 times, Jack and I went to Jerusalem and how we knew that this was given to the Israeli people. This is their land. Jack, how do you feel about this? I think this pope gets his foot in his mouth once too often. And I've got Catholic leaders saying this now from various Catholic publications. And the next two weeks, tell everyone you know, I'm going to go after some of the things this man has been saying that are against the Doye version, Roman Catholic Bible, against the catechism. I'm wondering where he gets his information. He just said, and he's favoring the Palestinians because he's calling that the Christian part. The other's the Jewish part. I got the quotes. Now, remember, Hamas and Fatah are murdering Islamic terrorists who are controlling Palestine. And the Christians have dwindled to 5,000. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. This pope just said, I read it, he intends to define himself as a Shea Guevara of the Palestinians. You know who that man is? Tune in next week and you'll find out. The bloodiest murderer ever who turned the entire Latin America into communism, who helped Fidel Castro and his brother control the people and make them suffer like they did. And he wants to be that Sheikh Guevara as his hero? A Catholic pope talking that way? Next two weeks, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to be quoting all Catholic leaders and scholars. I won't say a word myself. I'm going to tell you what is being said now. He's talking too loosely. I'll tell you, if God loves anyone, Pope Francis, it's the Jew. Oh, right here. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you, the Jew. Mm. Psalm 122, 6. God says, Israel is my elect, my chosen. Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. Elect, Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. Israel is the apple of mine eye, Zechariah 2, 8. And get this. Israel is my wife, Jeremiah 3, 14. Just like the church is the bride of Christ. Pope Francis, get into your Bible. Get into your catechism. Wait, Jack, you cannot contradict the Bible. No. 
the Lord God expressed his heart concerning Israel already, didn't well, he? I'm telling you, a lot of the Catholic magazines are really getting upset now because of some of the things he's saying. Right. He doesn't think before he speaks. Yes. And what bothers me the most, the Jesuit movement has turned to communism, and here he is saying, I want to be the Che Guevara, the one who incorporated it throughout South America. Whoa, whoa. It's pretty strong. I'm going to look forward to doing that program next week, so don't miss it now. The atomic scientists met together. And why did they do that? To give the forecast of atomic warfare to set the doomsday clock. And they've set it to, you know where? One minute to midnight. Now, Jack has written a book that expresses this. I'd like you to see the cover. Awake, America! The world's final warning, and there's where he set the clock, 1159. Then USA Today, closing time? Whoa, that doesn't give us very much hope, does it? Closing time? And again, I'll ask Jack what the Bible says about closing time. Is this the closing time for humanity, Jack? Romans 13, verses 11 and 12, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awaken out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The salvation, how could that be nearer? You get saved, you get saved. No, no. The salvation of the body, Romans 8.23, when he says, come up hither, Revelation 4.1, and we sweep through 187 trillion billions of miles and 11 one-hundredths of a second. A twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15.52. That's why Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. The night cometh when no man can work. He's talking about the tribulation hour. John 9, verse 4. Ladies and gentlemen, we are right at the end. And it is not the end of the world. For heaven's sake, get that straight. Even you Christians are talking about the end of the world. 120 times this book says the world's never going to end. That's good news. Every Catholic Mass ends with world without end. Amen, amen. Why? Isaiah 45, 17 and Ephesians 3, 21. It's a world without end. Well, doesn't it say in a few places where the world's going to end? Oh, I think you mean Matthew chapter 13, verses 39, 40, 49, Matthew 24, 3, 28, 20, and Hebrews 9, 26. That is nothing about the world. That is the end of the church age. If you were to search out the Greek, it should never say world in those texts. It should be the end of the age, the end of the church age. And when does that end? When he says, come up hither in Revelation 4.1. We've just discussed the seven churches of Asia in chapters 2 and 3 of the book of Revelation. After the come up hither, you never again see the church from chapter 4 onward to the end. Now it's the kingdom. The king has come. And that's in Revelation 19.11 when he comes on that white horse. And he comes as the king of the kings and the lord of the lords, Revelation 19.16. And he reigns for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 4. Then he's recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And then he reigns forever and forever on earth. Listen to this, Revelation 11, 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever and forever. From where? Jerusalem! Pope Francis mm -hmm. and over the Jews. That's going to be the Judea Christian World Empire. Amen. What? Do you remember what Gabriel, the angel, said to the Virgin Mary, Luke 1, 32 and 33? Your child shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest, and he shall sit upon the throne of his father, David the Jew. And he shall reign over the house of Israel. Not Palestine, Israel, forever and forever. I'm not dogmatic. I love Palestinian people. I was there many times. I've preached to them. And there are some Christians there, but not many anymore. They've had to flee. Why? Because Hamas and Fatah have 200,000 rockets aimed at Israel. Pope Francis, you ought to start praying for them and be there. She Guevara. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. You know, something that Jack has referred to so very, very often on this program is uh, the rapture. 
Now, you know, others have written books, and they've given messages on the rapture also. Here's a one, a Frank Hart, Revelation and the Rapture Unveiled. Now, hey, friends, look at this next one. TV's entering in. I became part of the human race. You'll see me, but you won't hear me. Amy Brenneman, 49, says of her role on The Leftovers, a new HBO series debuting in June, about people left behind after the, what does it say? Rapture. Wow, HBO Whoa. is backing us. <laughs> some are, of those preachers don't know what they're talking about when they reject it. They, they're entering in on this. Thank the Lord. It's becoming a word that's being used in the world as well as in the church. The rapture. Now, I'm going to ask Jack quickly if you just give us an analysis of what that means. The rapture. Some yeah. people say, you can't believe in the rapture. You can't find the word rapture in the Bible. You can if you get the Latin Vulgate by that great Catholic leader, Jerome. When he gets the first Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 16, it says, they shall be taken up. He has in the Latin, rapiamord, raptured. Amen. Now, I'm talking to some of you lukewarm preachers who don't believe what the Bible says, and you've misled your people as well, saying there is no such thing as a rapture. If that's true, then you have nothing on which to stand when it comes to the resurrection of the dead. Why? Jesus said in John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And that's a thousand years later of Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15. Now, why do I say that? No. All right. Explain to me, preacher, and you folks who don't believe in the rapture, what happens at the resurrection of the dead? Well, anybody knows that. They come out of graves, and they live. All right. But what happens to those who are alive and see them come out of the graves? I never thought of that. No, you haven't. Now, listen carefully. There are only two texts that describe what happens to the dead and the living. If you don't believe in the rapture, you've got no hope. And the one is 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then, and then, we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, frighten one another with these words. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, now here's the next one, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Do you know what the word mystery means? Yeah, I, I see it in detective stories all the time. No, no, not in the Bible. A mystery is something that's only been said for the first time, and the Apostle Paul was given the ministry of the rapture, and he called it that mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, be dead, but we shall all change both the dead and the living. For this corruptible, the dead must put on incorruption. This mortal, the living, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible, the dead, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal, the living, shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass that saying written, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Dead and living going up. And if you don't preach the rapture, you can't tell people oh, there's going to be a resurrection of the dead because there's no hope for the living unless they commit Harry Carey. Mm. Rexella? Yes. Revelation 3.10 is for those who are saved. I will keep you from, ek, out of the hour of testing that comes on the whole world. They're redeemed. That's what that series is going to be on HBO. Yes. But what happens to those that are left behind? Lost as hell. Revelation 3.15, this is the lay of the church. I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. I would, you are cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. That's the Greek word, Gurgitate. He says, you make me so sick, I want to vomit. Why? Because you say, I'm rich and increased with goods and have needed nothing. And knowest not that thou wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You're lost. Let's go on, honey. Oh, yes, isn't <laughs> it wonderful, though, to know that uh, when we close our eyes here in death, they call it death, we go home to be with the Lord. But that's not the end. Our spirit goes home, but when he comes in the rapture, he raises our bodies for new bodies. We'll be like the Lord. How wonderful. Are you ready for that time? 
We need to be looking for the coming of the Lord anytime. Be ready. And now, friends, the last week for this wonderful offer, Enemies of the Cross. Take a look, please. The Apostle Paul, who slaughtered hundreds of Christians before his conversion to Christ, was forgiven and chosen to expose the enemies of the cross of Christ. Today, 132 nations proclaim their hatred for Christianity. Who are these ungodly enemies? Atheists, New Agers, cultists, Christian defectors, and Muslims. On billboards, atheists call our Lord a useless savior. New Agers state through Dr. Shookman's course on miracles, promoted on Oprah Winfrey show, that a slain Christ has no meaning. So do not make the pathetic air of clinging to the old rugged cross. Worse yet, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontier Bible translators created a new version for Muslims eliminating Christ as the Son of God 91 times. By doing this, they've destroyed Christianity's message. This act denying that Jesus is the Son of God identifies these three translation groups as enemies of the cross of Christ and Antichrist 1 John 2.22. Why did they do it? Since Muslim invaders entered Jerusalem in 637, they did away with all crosses. And that's the way it's been ever since. These 21st century enemies of the cross recently promoted ads on Australian television saying, move over Jesus for a new savior. For a complete study and expose on all these groups, order enemies of the cross. Oh, this is our last week, so please don't put it off. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. I'll be giving you, as a gift with your order, this beautiful gold cross. So please make the call. And now Jack's going to be giving you something very important also. Jack? Eric Barger did a tremendous manuscript on this subject about Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontiers, and the damnable thing they've done to the Bible that they sent to the Muslims, taking Jesus out as the Son of God 91 times, and 1 John 2.22 says, anyone that denies the Father and Son relationship is an antichrist. These men are antichrist. They ought to get out of the ministry. You ought to do everything you can to get them out of the ministry. I'm calling the Southern Baptist Convention, the new evangelicals of the world, to take a stand because they don't deserve. They've done such great damage to the message of the cross. And as you heard last week, they've destroyed the five points of fundamentalism. And now let me just say, this is the last week, the last week. So make the call. My gift to you, there is the 800 number, and there's the address. So call me. I'll get this in the mail soon as we hear from you. You know, I'm going to back up to something. I'm going to put Jack on the spot before I go into any more headlines. You know, we're going to get new bodies when the Lord comes and raises us in the rapture. Now, Jack, how old will I be when I get to heaven? You ever wondered that? We're going to have old people, babies. What are we going to have in heaven? How old will we be? Oh, you're always going to be 39 <laughs> like right now, sweetheart. Right, no. <laughs> the DNA they find out never ages over 33 years of age. Hallelujah. And that's the age Christ was when he went to the cross. And 1 John 3, 2 says, when we see Jesus, we should be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen and amen. And I'll say amen to that too, Jack 33. But to be like the Lord, oh, how we can look forward to eternity with him. Now, you know, friends, the Taliban's been very aggressive with their terroristic acts globally. But um, Jack just said to me that he thought we should go on and talk about a couple of other things. But you have a whole packet on terrorism, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so tired of hearing that Islam is a religion of peace. I'm talking to you, Rick Warren, and some of the others. You make a lot of excuses for them. I've read the Quran through twice. First of all, I have 150 headlines from the last two years where they've been killing Christians in terrible ways. Number one, they say kill infidels through crucifixion. And that's Surah 533. Or beheading Surah 47.4. Ladies and gentlemen, it's arrived. And that's one of the final signs before Jesus comes. He says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and revolutionaries, wars and terrorism. Don't be frightened. These things must first come. They're here. Why? What are we waiting for? 
Then when it's happening, shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Russia and China and the Arab world are going to go together for the greatest war. And right now, we're going to talk about a peace program that's coming. And that's the last thing that happens before Jesus comes. And first of all, there's a man who becomes the leader of the new world order. That's Revelation 13, verse 1, and he controls all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, verse 7, and all the world worships him, verse 8. And then there is a new pope, and Catholic theology tells us it's 113 from Celestine II. This Pope Francis is going to be involved with this coming peace program. And I just heard from one of the great archbishops of the Catholic Church, and he says, I believe this world dictator and religious leader, leader of the one world order and one world religion, are already waiting in the wings. And he said, he said it, it's your president and our pope. <laughs> you know, Jack, I can't help but just get stuck on a verse. Let not your heart be troubled. He just quoted it. Isn't it wonderful to know we have an outlook for this terrible outlook? And then I'm going to go on by saying, in such a time as this, he just referred to a political leader, world political leader, and a world religious leader. Take a look at this, rolling with the Holy See. Of course, that's President Obama and Pope Francis at the Vatican. Take a look, please. Obama and Pope meet on many levels. Let's see the levels they're meeting on. Obama, Pope Francis discuss global conflicts and human rights. My Omar, oh they are discussing in depth some of the things on both of their minds and hearts. Well, four Islamic nations are calling for Obama to help out. Jordan's king discusses Middle East peace talks with Obama in May in peace to Jerusalem while well, he has been there. And I'd like you to take a close look at that picture. Look at that little lamb around his neck. Sort of signifies a good shepherd there, doesn't it, Jack? All what right. does it mean? Sella, I've already told you that this archbishop wrote me and said, can you imagine that the world leader is going to control the entire globe and the world religious guy is going to control the one world religion. He says, I think it's your president and our pope. You've heard me say it. This is my second time, but I say it for this reason. That's exactly what the Bible says. I've already shown you about our president and the way he's going as catering to the Muslims everywhere. And secondly, this man has the two horns of a lamb, Revelation 13, verse 11. Why? Identifies him as a Christian leader of the new world religion. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God, John 1, 29, but he speaks as a dragon. He gets his foot in his mouth often. All Let's right, go on. All right, I'm going to go on here. And uh, how about anti-Semitism? Is it just local or global? Take a look. Paul says anti-Semitism is a global matter. And anti-Semitism in the streets of Europe, will you see that in the neck of that man there? I have told to kill all Jews, annihilate Israel. And Jerusalem, Iman urges Muslims to invade Israel. I'm going to ask Jack to wrap this up. Israel is really a hated nation by the Middle East countries, right? Oh, Rexella, we've got headlines here that are the final headlines for the closing moments. It's closing time, like USA Today said. Now, the next thing we're going to see is a peace program being set up, and here's Jordan and Saudi Arabia, Syria, and others calling for our president to head it up. Now, get this carefully. That's how they come to power. Daniel 11, 21, the world leader comes in peaceably. 11, 24 of Daniel, he enters in peaceably. But it's the covenant of death and hell, Isaiah 28, 15. Why? Because he destroys many through a peace program. How is that possible? because he builds up their hopes. This is it. Oh, we were so afraid it was the end of the world, and now we're going to have peace, peace. And that's Jeremiah 6, verse 14, and chapter 8, verse 11. But here is the point that I want you to get. When they say, peace, safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they'll not escape. And who leads it? Russia, Gog of Mega, Putin. What? Ezekiel 3, 11. He says, I'm going to go against them that are at rest, that are at peace. 
Who? Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh or Russia today in that text. China joins with them. That's Revelation 16, 12, and chapter 9, verse 14 to 18, the greatest war in history. By these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. And then all the Arab world, Muslim world, joins with them. And their goal is Psalm 83, 4, let's cast off Israel from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. Hey, Pope Francis, that's where they're headed. But I got news for the world. God says, I'll give Israel, Israel an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, verse 5. Oh, Jack, my old man, can you see where it's going? It's all coming together as the Bible said it would. Jack quotes so much of the Bible to us, and it all points to the return of the Lord, and we need to be ready, don't we? Are you ready? If the Lord came today, how about the that alcohol that you're hooked on or that heroin that's so easy to get today. Whatever it is, the Lord will forgive you. He'll come into your heart, be your Savior, and free you of all of that. Will you open your heart to Him and be His child? Let Him be your Savior. Jack's going to pray the prayer right now. Jack. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. No ifs, ands, or buts. Will you call? Look at me. Pray these words. Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, the only Savior. Jesus, thank you for shedding that blood, that holy, untainted, precious blood for me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Save me. Oh, I've done so many sins, Lord. But your grace is sufficient. Your death will cover it all. Your blood will wash it all away. And Jesus, I trust you today. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. I want to be with you soon as you return. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, friends, if you made that decision, please write to me. I'll send you this little booklet for steps in a new direction. As soon as I hear from you, there's my address. Write to me. God bless you as you walk with the Lord. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week. Last week, Chuck... Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Enemies of the Cross. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free... 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapi Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N-I-N-A-6-Y-1. Remember, last chance, back to Rex Eller. And remember, friends, my gift with that call, this wonderful cross. Oh, make the call right away. It's so important that you know enemies of the cross. I want to leave you with this thought. We find the courage to stand when we kneel before the Lord. Looking forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. So very, very much. Bye-bye.